welcome man welcome 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 back to the channel what's good out there man so too much light in here man i gotta have my shades man what is going on what is popping that's right man online mechanic tip uh typical sunday take talk sunday what we like to do every sunday i'm back off a nine hour drive whoa oh tom i don't know if i can do nine hours anymore my max used to be 12. And of course, as I got older, it went down lower and lower and lower and lower. Now I don't want to freaking drive at all, but I hate flying. So I'm at stuck at a, like a standstill. So to solve all of that madness, I just don't go no damn well, right? Yeah, I just stay at the damn house, man. But uh, yeah, man, Tech Talk Sunday. So we're going to get into some Q&A. I got a lot of freaking questions on my channel that I intend to address, okay, because uh that's what i do man that's what i'm here for man a lot of people reach out to me for answers that some i can help and some i can give and some i can't okay uh for those that i can't i can only advise you to seek those that can okay the thing about me guys uh especially for the ones that you know will ask these super technical questions okay and a lot of people get the misconception that I know everything about their car just because it's a Chrysler Plymouth or Dodge. Uh, guys, at the end of the day, whatever problem is ailing your car, it still have to be diagnosed. Okay? There's no diagnosing I can do from where I sit. I have to repeat that over and over again because people think, seem to think I just have a magical answer. Okay? They are... They are they, comment a question my charger won't start what you think it is what it is dog i know you know like no man you still have to go through the proper channels it still have to be diagnosed like anything else i do not magically know what's wrong with anybody car even though i don't care if it is a chrysler dodge jeep or ram it doesn't matter i still don't magically know what's wrong with your car and the ones that really get me is the one man i heard a noise under my hood what is it? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I didn't play up. Come on now. Uh, you know, I try to get a most respectful answer. I try to answer without making the ask ski feel, you know, yeah, I'm more I'm respectful. So I try to say it in a nice way. Uh, I don't know, man. I number one, I can't hear. It. And they'll they when I say that, they'll go, Well, what's your email? Let me email you this noise. That's just gonna confirm what the noise is. It's not gonna affirm confirm where the noise coming from that part still have to be diagnosed so yeah that's what my q a that's what my question box be full of okay and of course i still get the ones that ask all these super technical questions when i ask them are they subscribe they simply ignore that part and continue with their questions uh i don't know if y'all ever read the comments y'all see if y'all don't see an answer after my or after somebody asks me something and i ask them are they subscribe it's because we're done at that point. I, and the conversation don't even need to go farther, man. Uh, I, I can't. I have subscribers to tend to. So, uh, yeah. I don't want to get behind this time, guys, like I tend to do, man. Tom, glad you're back, man. I uh, hope you had a nice trip. Broke Mexican wrenches. Boy, y'all and these freaking screen names. What's up, man? Do you know uh, Fluffy Mexicanic? Uh, my homie out of Texas. Texas and speaking of Texas, I heard that the Dallas Cowboys won. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. I don't know how true that is. I don't know. I don't freaking know. And I don't care. <laughs> Did the Falcons win? Can anybody confirm if my Atlanta Falcons won? All right. When Dallas play the Atlanta Falcons, me and Fluffy gone, we might live stream that day. I don't know when that game is, but uh we're going to live stream and have the game plan. We're going to do the fourth quarter. Hopefully, it's close so we can make it some kind of super spectacular event. Fluffy Mexican, where you at? I can't wait till the Cowboys play the uh, the Falcons. Uh, yes, y'all know the Falcons should win that game. But uh, anyway, what it do, bro? How are you, man? Got a question. Feel like giving an answer? Shoot it, man. You caught me at early. And plus, some of these other mechanics will be strolling in. Dakota Foster. Does your name insinuate you drive a Dakota truck? Go for it, baby. Uh, yes, go for it. 
I need that YouTube certified patch. Hey, man, you can't have this, man. This is only giving out the super Chrysler Tech Jeep Dodge, all that good stuff, man. Uh, the Hemi. These are only giving out to Hemi drivers and Hemi owners. Broke Mexican wrench. I don't know what you drive, but ah, you can't have that with player. Uh, yes, these only uh, for selected few. Oh, crap. He's ran. No, I'm not, man. I'm not. Don't hear me. Look, man, I'm just saying, every time I go to my comment section, what is it, dog? What you think it is, dog? I heard a ticket noise. What is it? Even a ticket noise. I don't give a damn if I've done a gazillion of them. I still don't know what your reason for ticking because I haven't diagnosed it. I have to diagnose this stuff. Don't hear me, man. Don't do that, man. Stop, man. Stop playing, man. But you know everything about my car. Just about. Uh, 69 dark man come on man don't do that man y'all stop man uh shh, he's on a roll no 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 i'm good i'm good cobalt and supercharged metal shavings on an oil filter but not oil pan caused the motor to go limp from this gear but haven't noticed any issues could the metal shavings be from my bearing but yes could be that's a uh now be careful when you say or oh, how you use that term so loosely metal shavings people would call any kind of shaving, metal shaving, even if the item that has shaved is made of aluminum, they'll still say metal shavings. Uh, the key here is uh, knowing exactly what those shavings are from. That way you can determine where it came from. Okay. So <laughs> if it's metal shaving and you suspect something aluminum has failed, that, that what you suspect has failed likely is not it. On um, vice versa, if it's aluminum, it's little shavings and your item that potentially has failed is made of something else, that item likely has not failed. So you got to be careful how you analyze those freaking shavings. Cobalt as a supercharger, metal shavings on an oil filter, but not oil pan. Well, that's the filter's job is to capture those shavings. The filter's job is to filter the fluid, whatever fluid, in this case, oil. It's designed to filter that stuff so it doesn't make it back into the lubrication system. Now, what it caused the motor to go limp uh, from Miss Gear, but haven't noticed any issues. Could the metal shaving be from my bearings popping out? Yeah, man. It very well could be if it's made of uh, metal, like I say. So yeah, you got to go deeper into that, man. That, some of this stuff is only diagnosed uh, with the with the eye, uh, visual. Okay. So, yeah, you got you to gotta go deeper into that thing, man. Um, I mean, you can suspect. We can all suspect. Up that that is the case, but you know we'll never know. You'll never know until you get in there, man. Uh, some shit is hard. My 05 Durango is hesitant when accelerating from stop with the AC on. If your AC on, there's an additional load. Okay, you got the compressor and likely the fan. So there may be a slight little hesitation. This is an 05. Dark. That's susceptible. Back in 05, okay? The computers were not as sophisticated as they are right now. In this day and age, where we at? 2022, there's a piece of device on a computer that will adjust idle quickly. In the event your compressor kick in and your fan come on, remember, when the fan come on, idle may drop. No, that computer is so freaking fast, it will computerly raise the idle, and you will never notice your idle fluctuated or your car hesitated. 05 is acceptable, dark. Uh, now, you may have other reasons causing the hesitation. Depending on bad, how bad the hesitation is. Yeah, we can speak on this stuff all day long. Depending on how bad the hesitation is. But uh, some things in the 05 model, man, it's, it's cool. It's okay. It's, you, you're never going to get it back new. Or it's never going to be the same as it was back in 05. Right? Yeah, we, we let a lot of stuff slide right now. My freaking... 07 every light on in the dash all right that's not mm -mm, some yeah that's not cool uh all right let it roll man unless it's severe oh uh, yeah you helped with my name update yeah you helped with my name oh yeah 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 that's my guy man that's my dude man hey that's what mm. we're going to the freaking super bowl <laughs> y'all know how some of these hardcore fans be they team win one game hey we're going to the super bowl uh oh barely oh wait a minute oh they won 20 who did who won against the brown the falcons or the cowboys um oh 
Mm, yeah, if that was the Cowboys, y'all ain't ready for uh, y'all ain't ready for Atlanta. Five point oh Coyote Whipple Supercharger or Turbo opinion. Oh, uh, my opinion. I don't have an opinion. All right. Oh, uh, I don't know. I take a stab. I take a shot or a choice. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have, I'm, I'm gonna pass on this one, Brian. All right. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm gonna have to pass on that one, man. <laughs> I need that patch. All the vehicles I own is a dodge. What? <laughs> then, then I need that patch. Oh, you talking about you need a patch because all your hey man, these are uh, these are uh, what they say. Oh, my ASC expired. I gotta go get my ASC so I can get a real ASC patch. I gotta go reach that man. I don't feel like it, man. Oh, did you see Milwaukee new? No, I haven't. Has been breaking. Oh, has been breaking. One guy broke seven of them in a row, four of them in front of the Home Depot manager. Damn. No, I haven't, man. Milwaukee got some problems. Mine's holding up well. I got that big half inch. Oh, uh, yeah, mine's holding up well. Wonder what's going on, man. We got to follow up on that. Metal shavings, your toast. Uh oh. According to Darhemi, you see metal shavings? That's a wrap. Darhemi is pretty mechanically inclined, my friend. Mmm. Any general advice on when to put money into a cheap car versus buying a different cheap car when dealing with repairs on a budget? I mean, on a budget, it's always make economical sense to try to fix what you got, okay? Uh, due to the mere fact, if you plan on buying another used cheap car, you don't technically know what you're getting, okay? It could have more problems, hidden problems that uh, a lot of people always tend to go to the auction and get these cars with hidden problems guys y'all don't know whether y'all know this or not the auction cars i feel with cars even mechanics don't want to fool with okay if i jt the car guy sent a freaking car to the auction i don't know what the hell wrong with it right because i can pretty much sell anything that i want to or own if i don't want my potential customer to own this car because of some super hidden dumb problems, yeah, go to the auction. Let them deal with it. Yeah. So I got out of the habit of selling stuff with known problem because an incident that happened to me. <laughs> I sold a car, a cradle. Cradle was broken, a crack in it. I sold a car. Now, y'all keep in mind when y'all selling these cars, on that title that you give that buyer is your name and in some cases your freaking address. Yes, your freaking address. So the guy hadn't traded the title in, took it to the title pond, did anything. He hadn't done all that yet. He just hung on to it for a while, just lazy. He went to get an oil change, Jiffy Lube under there with a flashlight. Yo, buddy, Holmes, come here, Holmes. You see this crack in your frame? That's bad, Holmes. You could crash and die, Holmes. I'm, I'm messing with my dude. Uh, anyway, the customer go, that damn JT sold me this car. He whip out the title that I gave him and signed. Here's his address right here. And that same piece of junk car that I sold him and uh, come to my residence, knocking on my door. Hey, man, you sold me a car with a broke cradle. Oh, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, oh, uh, ooh, no, no good. Uh, that's why now, because of that incident, all of those cars go to the auction. How did I get on that? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, my dude, be careful. Buying another car. Just put that finances in what you got, I guess. You know. Uh yeah, the too many hidden. Um, mm, yeah. When is cheaper to replace it with a better one? Yeah, a known better one. That, that's the problem with used cars or use anything. You don't know the history or you don't know anything. You can get you can get out of the customer what's been done and all that, but at the end of the day, it's still a crapshoot. Body man here. Uh I got a Honda HRV that came in and won't start. The dipstick is in the valve cover close to the ignition coils. The second and third ignition coils are all melted, and there are ECM, PCM codes, clues. What are the codes? Uh, ooh, they melted? Now, it could be something misfire code. What do you say? Uh, they just simple misfire codes, and the second and third ignition coils are melted, and there are ECM codes, clues. I mean, gra grab the codes and center your diagnosis around the codes. Okay, if it's a P0302, that's a misfiring cylinder two. 
So focus all your energy on cylinder two and find out why the computer has determined that there's a problem in cylinder two. Could be that burnt ignition coil. Yeah. So, yeah, you scan the thing and find go from there with the codes, man. Um, it might turn out to be something easy, simple, whatever. Yeah, I replaced all that crap. Uh, it has an actual cable. It's supposed to shut off the compressor for five seconds. It has an actual cable, or 05 model. Oh, a throttle cable. Oh, no ETC on the 05. Ooh, you got one of those. <laughs> Dart Hemi can actually go into his hood and grab the throttle and go, oh, oh. he can't do that no more, guys. That's, see, Dart Hemi got his old stuff. Man. We are now utilizing uh, electronic throttle control, meaning ain't no more of this. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay, Dart. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, where you headed with the diagnosis, Dart? I'm cur curious. Uh, yeah, where you headed? Uh, let me know, man. Let's let us all know, man. Trying to replace some quick struts on my truck, and the damn spring's been back order from Mopar for two months. How you do your job with this going on? Who the moment two forever? Moment. We got two cars out in the back right now. Um. Uh, a decoder and something else. I can't remember what it was, but guess what? It's a no crank, no start. They need skim modules. Do you know those freaking skim modules are discontinued? Discontinued? No, don't, don't make them no more. Like, that's it. Now, what do you mean that's it? I, how am I supposed to drive? I, I had it told here. Now, you're never, ever going to leave. So, whoever in here got some connection with an aftermarket company, now, I ain't talking about Dermon. Dermon done stole one of our designs with that oil filled adapter house. And everybody keep bragging on that stuff. Uh, look, man, <laughs> let me say this. I, mean, I, I hate to get off the subject. But the Dermon oil filled adapter housing has nothing on the newer OEM adapter house. I don't care if it is made of that tough plastic, okay? Dermon jumped on the bandwagon when... There was a known problem. Dermon didn't design their oil filled adapter. They would have they would have went through the same scrutiny that Dodge is going through. Okay, in other words, Dermon used the original manufacturer as guinea pigs. Oh, oh, a car company got problems. Let's jump out there. Let's make one better. So they went and bought one. They went and bought some from the dealer. Plastic? Oh hell no! Nah. Let's. Okay, guys, they sit down in the meeting. Let's do it. Make hours out of aluminum and do this. Make some more passages. Make it. Yeah, they did the same thing that Chrysler did with their old model. In other words, it has been revised. Okay, so for those of you that are still bragging on that freaking Dermon off of the adapter housing, it's no better than the OEM newer revised. Dermon got a heads up because they came on, they jumped on the bandwagon after. This was known to be a problem. All right? Had they start this 36 came out in 2011, showed up on the minivan. Had Dermon designed a off the adapter housing in 2010 and, and put them on the 36s? Yeah, they can. <laughs> I would give them accolades. And y'all know I'm a heavy OEM guy. I'd be like, all right, Dermon. Y'all, hey, y'all, hey. Y'all did that, man. Y'all, hey, y'all killed it, man. But no, they waited to. 2012, 2013, when it was a known problem, and they invented one, and now everybody, oh, Dermot, Dermot is the genius. No, how the hell did I get on that? Okay, I'm sorry, I got off track. Oh, uh, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, a lot of stuff on back up. That might not be the car maker problem. That may be the shipping. And y'all know what's going on with all these chips and all that stuff, man. Wait a minute, man. Don't blame everything on. On FCA, give us a break, okay? Oh, stop it. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Moment two forever. My neon was shut off the compressor when I punch it. Yes, why the throttle? On the older technology, you punch something. Uh, that signal from the TPS, okay? This is neon. It had a TPS, throttle position sensor. In other words, <laughs> when you do this as an electrical signal, go to the PCM, tell it where your foot is on the gas. If it sits wide open throttle with the AC on, that computer will magically disengage the AC clutch via the AC clutch relay. It'll just pull the ground away and the clutch will go off. While you punching it, <laughs> the minute you let off, okay, it's going to come back on. All right. Yeah, a lot of things happen in our older technology uh, 
when wide open throttle happened. A lot of things happen, man. Um, ooh, old technology. Milwaukee seven nine five. It's the faulty. Oh, I don't have one. I don't think. What is mine? I can't remember what version mine is. But class action lawsuit broke Mexican wrench. Did somebody say class action? I won't in on it. I won't in on it. Uh, I gotta check into that. I don't know, man. My friend has a used car lot, and he sends me the shittiest cars with the weirdest problem. JJW40, welcome to the club, my dude. I got a couple of friends that use car lots, and they would call me over there to shut cars up. In other words, they have a little Pentastar ticking noise. Look, man, just fix exactly the freaking problem. Don't come over here with no 24 rocker arms. I'm like, man, we probably should do them all. Look, man, just shut the car up. That's all I'm paying you for. <laughs> so I whip out my camera and make a video and explain to my 80,000 subscribers what's going on. There's always some knucklehead in the comment. You ought to be shaming of yourself treating the new buyer like that. Hey, look, man, the new buyer that come by these cars, they're going to be quiet, right? It's hard to sell a car when it's noisy, right? <laughs> so the owner want me to shut them up. And I do what I'm told, what I'm being paid for. Uh, but yeah, they always call me over there for them problem child. Uh, they send me the shittiest cars with the weirdest problem. It'd be like that sometime, man. It'd be like that sometime. And you you probably have it real hard because some of yours are, I mean, some of any kind of car. All right? Don't call me with no damn uh, Nissan. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not one of those guys, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, you best call some. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, all from Suwanee County, Florida. Oh man, I hope everything going on out there in Florida. Uh, I heard about what's happening. I hope y'all holding it down out there. Been a while since I have been online, Greg. Yes, it has. How have you been, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for that's what's up. M N D M D. Thanks for stopping by. Almost a thousand views in five hours on my latest video. Dark. We never did. I never did get your stuff, man. Oh, uh, let me check you out, man. Not bad. No, of course it's not bad, man. YouTube picking up. YouTube is the way to go, man. Dipstick melted too. Uh oh, that's not good, guys. We're about to head over to uh, uh, Motor City Mechanic, Mopar. No, Motor Biscuit. Check it in from the Shy Town, Samuel. What's up, my friend? Slow sub growth too, though. Uh, yeah, man. That you, dark. Jump on the short bandwagon, man. Uh, you can pay seven dollars and have the skim module. Heart hat. Whew, be careful with that. Uh Dart Hemi. I guess he's been through that. Thurman takes all the fixed OEM stuff. <laughs> Thurman licenses it from you guys. I'm sure, but yeah, but I'm just it just irks me when people just uh, if you know where the motor that controls the throttle body, you can probably rev it uh that way. The motor oh yeah. Interesting. My brother works at the Mopar Atlanta PDC. I guess certain parts are seriously delayed. Man, and Dermot makes parts when OEM discontinues. So, yeah. Well, yeah, from that standpoint, cool. I mean, tell them to start making some damn skims. Uh, yes, Mim -M -D. I, I I run a studio, man. I'm a producer. Yeah, you can't see all of this. Uh, I got to get my uh, – yeah, I got some people itching for some tracks. And I'm working on my solo project as well. Hey, my dude in the building. What's going on, man? OCD Auto. How are you, my friend? What is cracking, man? Open loop at wide open throttle. Was that the word I was looking for? Yes. Yes. Word I was looking for. Man, OCD, I done forgot all of that stuff, man. Um, Open loop, closed loop. Y'all know when you first start your car, I think it's in open loop. Uh, You know, a car don't run its best from an efficiency standpoint until it warms up. And the computers and the O2 sensors, all of that, <laughs> the heaters on the O2, all of that is designed to heat this thing up as quickly as possible so it can go into closed loop. And that would help it reach stoichiometric <laughs> air fuel ratio. It's all about emissions, I guess. But, oh, I used to can regurgitate that stuff just fluently. Now, I don't forget it all. Um, yes, OCD, that's what's up. JT, Alvin told me. Oh, you're being a technician. You asked me last time, what was I doing in my picture? I string tennis rackets for a living. Uh, I own my own shop. That's what's up. Alvin, Toby, I string tennis rackets for a living. Oh, you put the, oh, the little string. Oh, cool. I didn't know that was a thing. 
that's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. You should start a channel, man. Let us see some of that stuff, man. Okay. I have an 89 Dodge with a noise. Ah, stop. So what is it? <laughs> stop it, OCD. Stop it. How oh, Tom, Uncle Mark in the building, man. Yeah, YouTube is hooking me up with recommendations. Yeah, you're going to get all the Scotty recommendations. You know, I know how much you love Scotty Kilmore and uh, Uncle Tony. I know how much you love Uncle Tony. I don't have a motor on my throttle body. 69 down, man. I have an idle air control motor, but I replaced that. Uh, I don't know, man. Live with it. It's a freaking 05. Darn, hear me damn. I don't have a motor. Uh, yeah. What up, JT? Grady Morgan. How are you? Guys, let's go over to uh, Motor Biscuit. I have a physical cable. Yes, you do. Which has to be attached to something. So you got a throttle, right? Yeah. Guys, we're about to head over to. I don't think I did this. Let me do this. Let me share. I want to bring up something uh, with uh, share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Share. I want to bring up something with. Uh, with uh, I still had a throttle cable on my neon, but not sure what my OG. <laughs> Let, I want to bring up some. Uh, my buddy. Uh, uh, damn, what's his name? Um. Hey, look who just showed up. I'm working on the 07 Ram. Uh, it was easier to get the new engine than to get the part to fix the old engine. Wow. 07 Ram. What's something that thing? It could go either way. It could go four different ways. 3747 Hemi. No, 36 and 07. So three different ways. Curious what that thing had in it. Uh, yes. Um, motor biscuit. Okay. Guys, this is... Um, Y'all know this is my go-to site for all my automotive news, and there's a lot of freaking news going on. Three advantages the Nissan Miranda has over the Chevy Blazer. That, that's that's I wish uh, Fluffy was in here. I'm about to pick on his ass for a minute because they seem to want to match that Nissan Miranda up with the Dodge Durango. Oh, y'all see what's on the horizon? Oh, my goodness. Hydra, hydrogen-powered motorcycle, the future of two-wheel travel. Where are you motorcycle heads at? Do y'all see that? Okay. Interesting. Uh, I know some of y'all are going to fight it to the end. No. No. I'm over my dead body. Uh, JT can't help me. I turned the idol up, but it's going to, bitch, and throw a high idol code. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yes. I wanted to do this, but uh, Fluffy's not here today. He must take the day off. This is right here. This is comparison. Um, now, I didn't know this is not a match, guys. The Nissan Miranda, I, they're only showing a picture of the Durango. So, this article talks about five advantages the 2022 Dodge Durango has over the Nissan Miranda. This is almost not fair. In fact, it is totally not fair. Okay? Like, I mean, from a... <laughs> but I don't know too many people going to run out and go get a Dodge Durango over... Uh, I did notice it drive the car two-footed. <laughs> Uh, Dodge Durango over that Miranda, but this is totally not fair, man. I, I don't even want to entertain this Dodge Muscle Car SUV, guys. I'm gonna tell y'all what I saw earlier too. Uh, some guy created, invented a uh, more maximum cargo space in the Durango, of course, than the Miranda. More ground clearance than the Miranda. So those five things. The Dodge Durango has approximately 8.1 inches of ground clearance. Those five things that they brought up that the Durango has over the Miranda, it was fairly easy. So it ain't even worth talking about. Three reasons buying a 2020 Dodge Durango is a great idea. Uh-oh. They give me all three reasons. Ooh, now I'm curious. Three reasons buying a 2022 Dodge Durango is a great idea. Y'all hear that? All right. If you're in the market for a three-row SUV, there's one model you might have forgotten. Buying a 2022 Dodge Durango is still a great idea. There are many things to like about the sporty family side. Now, buy a 2 Okay, buy for the engine. All right. Now, I don't care what y'all say. Uh, first, a 3.6 V6 is standard for every trim up to RT model. It produces 295 horsepower. That is good for a little V6, guys. All right. I don't care what's your opinion on the 3.6, all the ticking nonsense. That foolishness is over with all right so y'all can stop saying that 
Next, reaching the RT trim level upgrade, the engine's a lot. Moreover, uh, the V6 for a 5.7 liter V8. Go there. So there's your other option. You can either get a 3.6 or a 5.7 V8. But the last option, a Dodge Durango SRT has a 6.4 V8. Technically, that's not a Hellcat, is it? The uh, 6.4. Hellcat is basically the 6.2, I want to say. But they are trying to sell that. The Wagoneer is so wonderful. Isn't it? <laughs> they trying to sell that uh, Durango based off those three things. Ah, a little bit of good news is Durango is going to be redesigned 2024. I don't think that's going to be a big hit, but you know, who am I now? Hey, S L O O C D. I'm glad you're here. O C D. Did you see this incident right here? This guy built now. This is how you can tell uh, when people are watching your, your YouTube channel, your YouTube video. This is Mopar Insider, right? This is the website. They pretty much predominantly uh, FCA product, right? So they reached out to this guy. They had to get authorization to post this video, right? He created OCD. Hear me out. He created a some type of software. Where is it at? That would keep people from stealing uh, the Hellcats. Right here. YouTuber has a great way. Matter of fact, where my headphones at? We're going to go over here. Uh, see what this is all about. YouTuber has a great way to prevent theft from stealing your Okay, Chrysler 300 Charger or your Challenger, not just the Hellcat. Now, what he did was, let me uh, let me do this, because I want to see what the hell is going on. I want to see. So what 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 I'm getting out of this, he built some kind of device that would tie into the system and not um uh, not really uh, he's making it to where a catalytic converter cleaner, good or bad. He's making it to where you can't steal the damn car. Now this has to be legit because like I say, Mopar Insider, the website picked up on it. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a neutral ship. All right, I wanted to highlight what the hell he was, uh. Uh, why uh, motor, why they picked up on it is really what I was, uh, I don't know. It's just interesting how you can, he, it's called obviously out of warranty, guys. That's not uh, feasible. That's not a really smart thing to do if you're under warranty. So 
Uh, yeah, he likely out of warranty, but I guess that's becoming a – there has been an ongoing issue with Dodge Challenger, Dodge Charger 300 models being stolen by thieves who have figured out how to reprogram a new key fob to the car in a matter of minutes. This means once a thief has broken into the car, they can reprogram a new key and simply press the start button. Damn. All right. <laughs> Good googly moogly. Boy, they getting more. Who they getting gooder and gooder. All right. Somebody asked me, uh, what is this? Cadillac con- converter cleaner, good or bad for the. What the hell? Cat Eric Motion. Did I skip somebody? I think I did. Uh, okay. Hold on, Eric. I think I replaced all that on the line. Oh, uh, replaced by EGR. Uh, I have an alarm issue with my 2015. Uh, no sound. Can't find the siren. Well, where is it? Ricky! 2015 BMW. I do not know that by heart, my friend. Okay. Can't find the siren. Uh, it is there if I have an alarm issue with my... Where is it? Yeah. I don't know that by heart, Ricky. We, you got to, uh, we got to look that up, man. Put a kill switch on him. All right. Uh, most here are Dodge Experience, not BMW. <laughs> I put them on some of my cars. Uh, where's the one? Uh, Cadillac Converter Cleaner. Uh, what in the world? All right. Can somebody enlighten me of this? Can somebody please, 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 please. I've been seeing this phrase around a lot. Can somebody please do me one damn favor and tell me. Uh. What the hell is a um, Cadillac converter cleaner? So you can always, Eric, you can already tell I'm going to have a hard time answering. In fact, I ain't going to be able to answer it because technically I don't know what the hell is Cadillac converter cleaner. What is that? Is that some form of solution that's designed to go, you put in, I will assume you put it in your fuel tank or how else is it going to make it to your converter to clean it? Or do you take the converters out? and clean it manually that way? Uh, This is a question that I want answers to myself, Eric. So we likely, we need to find this out ourselves. I personally am no fan of cat converter cleaners because they do nothing. The computers are designed to test those converters efficiency using the upstream and the downstream O2 sensor. Okay. So based off the information from those sensors, would tell the computer if the cat is being efficient enough for today's emission standards. That's what it's all about, emissions. Now, if not, uh, it will flag that code. What will cat efficiency or cat cleaner do? What is it made out of it? What is the, it designed to do? I want answers my damn self, all right? Because I've been in a bubble so long, I have no idea what everybody using as far as uh, aftermarket cleaning solution. Eric, I'm so sorry. I want to know myself, man. Uh, I lost the sound. I find a wire. Find a wire that is critical. We'll put a switch on it. All right. Oh, it's back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, guys, what do y'all know about this cat converter cleaner solution that my man talking about? Or just do what the old school race cars has some sort of battery disconnect, except put it on the starter side. Uh, Justin. I have been driving OTPT cruise with 30,000 miles with a cold eval bleak. Has this been a bad idea? You're not hurting anything, my my guy. Okay. In fact, uh eval leaks, uh, what you're doing is from a, a emission standpoint, the whole purpose of the EVAP system is to capture and store fuel vapors. Okay, we don't want those vapors out into the atmosphere. So every car from the year, I don't know, 86 maybe, probably higher than that, is designed to include what we call a charcoal canister. That canister is designed to store all of those vapors that your car may sometime emit. All right. You know, you have the fuel tank and this, that. You're going to open your thing to put a uh, fuel in it. So those vapors have to be stored and hidden somewhere. Now, at a predetermined time, which is dictated by the computer, uh, those vapors will come out of that canister because you can't store them all there. Eventually, it's going to pull up, right? It is the job of the purge valve 
to purge those vapors out of the canister and rattle them back into the engine and to burn through the engine. And it's the job of the cat converters, hopefully, to clean that up. The cat converter has a major job, guys, to clean up all that junk, all that emissions, and hopefully convert all that stuff into H2O, which is water. So um, you're not – only thing you're doing to the ozone, to the environment – is you letting you could you potentially letting fuel vapors escape your vehicle by not fixing it? Now, will drivability be affected? Likely not. Um, probably not. Okay, evap leaks. Yeah, you can drive around for a while with evap leaks. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. The answer to your question is: um, uh, Has this been a bad idea? I haven't had any. No. no. You, you eventually need to get it fixed, but um, yeah, because you. Like I say, you're letting out vapors into the atmosphere. That's not good. Potentially, allegedly. All right. I wonder if the cleaner actually is cleaning the sensors and not the cat. Cat converter cleaners. Are you talking about cleaning the O2 sensors? It depends on how how it's entered into the system. Like I say, is it a, some kind of fuel additive? And you, if you, whatever you put in the tank, going to eventually end up in your injectors, right? Y'all know the job of the injector to spray this mist out into the cylinders, where when the piston come up, it compresses it, and the spark will ignite it. Y'all know the drill, okay? So, how would that stuff make it to the O2 sensors or the cat? Because everything leave that cylinder out the exhaust side. The cat converter is on the exhaust side. Okay, it's on the exhaust stream. Okay, so does it get that stuff during that process? I don't know, but I would love to know. All right. Oh, uh, that is an interesting. It's a solution. So right. Uh, is cat converter cleaner a new version of Mario? <laughs> I don't know, man. Stop, uh, Lee. I don't know. Uh, it all boils down to replacing the cat. That's what I keep saying, man. Ain't no way around saving those freaking cat converters, guys. Now, there's a way you can prolong the inevitable. Okay, yes, I have installed what they call them damn things, filers, to hold me to the next year. I ain't got no thousand dollars for no damn cat converter. Let me, let me put this file on here, pass emission. Next time my birthday roll around, I promise I'll be ready. Shit. The next year roll around. I ain't got no thousand dollars for the converter. I'm gonna do it one more time, dog. One more time. One more time. I promise you, next year I'm gonna do it. Shit. Next year roll around. Oh, I still ain't got a. My point is, <laughs> I I don't want to spend a thousand dollars on it. So, but that's not good. I can't sit here and say that with a straight face because uh, people look up to me and my decision, guys. If you have any emissions problem. You are required by law to get it fixed eventually. You don't have a thousand dollars, go find a thousand dollars or find another car. But you shouldn't be riding around with a bad cat converter because you don't have a thousand dollars. Uh uh, that's not cool. It all boils down to, uh, yes, uh, the cleaner is usually stating it cleans O2 sensors and injectors to the extent the life of the cat added to the fuel tank. I didn't know that part. So you put it in your fuel tank. Like I said, it's going to eventually end up in your injectors and out the exhaust stream, right? Where the cat lives and the O2 sensors live. OCD seem to think uh, injectors to extend the, it will help extend the life of the cat. But, our, I mean, it depends on your reasoning, too. Like, if you got a PO420 cat converter efficiency, like, are you trying to fix that? And also keep in mind, guys, none of these are fixes. You can't magically make a cat converter all of a sudden now efficient, okay? No. Once it lose that efficient capability, it's a wrap. All we're doing after that is stretching the time, just prolonging the inevitable, all right? Yeah, it's just simple as that, man, by adding this stuff. Or by adding filers until you, I just, hey, we're just prolonging the inevitable. Because nothing on earth going to make a cat magically 
be efficient. I just made you now, you are now efficient back to factory. It ain't possible. Thank you, OCD. Uh, sounds like a no. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, good way to put that. A 2017 WGA battery went dead. New battery, DTC, no connections with shifter. Any way to solve without a tow to the dealer. OCD, what you think? WK2 battery went dead. New battery, DTC, no connection with the shifter. So did you, oh man, these damn hackers, boy, they block user. You out of here, suckers. Um. Uh, what well, OCD? Also, some uh, um, okay, let me get to that. Uh, Troy, hold on, man. Hold on, Troy. Hold on for a second. Uh, what does a bad PCM affect? <laughs> what does a bad PCM mean? What does that mean? Bad PCM. PCM has a gazillion responsibility. From what standpoint are you considering or you referring to as bad? PCM has control nowadays. They even control the transmission. An NGC controller is responsible for the shifting of the transmission. So that is too broad. That is too. That you can't say PCM bad. Oh, what are you bad from what standpoint? Um, uh, what does a bad piece? It, it can affect anything. It depends on what's being affected. Okay, so yeah, you you got to break that word up into some more. Um, some state also states they get rid of rotten egg smell okay if you smell eggs it's way too rich also there are precious metal in the cap that takes knocks hc and co and convert molecules and sustain where interesting very interesting um Okay, went dead. New battery DTC. No connections with shifter. Any way to solve without tow to the deal? Oh, I mean, you can start with another battery. Uh, battery went dead. You're supposed to be able to. Now, there's some things that will inadvertently be reset. Like, just say a Chrysler 200. You can, your battery can fail. You can change it, and all of a sudden, you locked out. Just say proxy alignment is knocked off the freaking bus, and you forced to tow it in just because your battery went dead. Okay, there are some things inadvertently that will be knocked off by a failing battery. Guys, I'm getting to the point now where I'm recommending my personal customer replace their batteries every two years, okay, uh, just to give them a piece, especially females, give them a peace of mind. Batteries are so... I mean, so unpredictable, man. You just never freaking know out of nowhere. I don't know. Uh, Troy, put a new battery on it. You saying your shifter will not move. No, you need a scan tube. You only the people that got those scan tubes that can get in there and do what you need done is the dealer. You might not have no way around uh towing that thing. And at that point. You don't need a tow truck because you'll be fixed. You're basically asking how to fix it. If you if you can put a new battery in and you're not locked out, there's no point in going to the shop, right? Yeah, right. So, yeah, you, I don't know if that's the way to get people to the dealer. No, man, that's not the case. They don't do stuff like that. But, yeah, you might not have a choice. The scan tool is the magic for dealer checks, all right? Um uh, Man, I feel bad, man. That is uh that is wrong, man. Is a shift indicator letter flashing? Good question. I wonder did he answer? Um, uh, is the printer lights flashing? Is what he's trying to say. Park reverse neutral drive. That is a good question. But OCD, I know you're aware of some of this stuff just getting knocked off. Every time, like a you got to reset EPS, every time you change a battery, it's always something you gotta do. The typical but nowadays, Joe Blows just can't replace his own freaking battery because something might got knocked off the shifter issues could be destroyed. Oh, no, or locked up in the ECM. Yeah, you start talking about stuff like that, you may not have a choice, my friend, but to get that thing told to the dealer. Man, feel bad. Sorry for you. 
Well, anyway, guys, yes, I'm going to wrap this up, man. That is all I'm going to speak on. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope y'all get a video a thumbs up. And uh, I hope you get it together, Troy. Guys, I will see you guys next Thursday, okay? I'm going to shut it down early so I can go in there. And, uh, I got three more videos to upload, but um, no lights flashing. Can't clear with the scan tool. You, my friend, may not have much of a freaking choice, first of all. That's what's up. Having fun with skunks. Uh, what's going on with you, man? I bought a Dodge Magnum that's set for four years. My whole dashboard is lit. Transmission won't shift. ABS. Yeah. Man, we talked about that earlier. Our doc. What's going on, my dude? How are you? How are you? Last time I heard from you, you told me you was going to get that um, uh, get that thing scanned and um, determine if it's speed sensors. Because remember what we discussed. Speed sensor will control your ABS light, traction control light, as well as your transmission problems if you're equipped with a NAG1 transmission, which you said you was. Okay. Um, so once you get a scan and find out this left rear wheel speed sensor circuit, all your ears may be gone once you put a wheel, and that's got to be easy enough for you, uh, my guy. Okay. So I hope you get that thing uh, straightened out. Okay. Oh, I have an oil light that's flashing a company with a beat. Uh-oh. This is an 05, I think you said it last time. Be careful with those oil light, guys. They could be as simple as the oil sending unit or that tab or that pin that's stabbed into the connector. I did countless videos on that. That repair applies to everything, all the old model Chrysler. It's a little, they stick a little, yeah, you got to watch that video to understand what I'm saying, but that's a lot of your problem as far as the oil light flickering, man. I was seeing you the skim disabler. There's a such, there's such a, yes, do that. I'm interested. Skim disabler. Uh, yes, Dar Hemi, please do that. All right. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, uh, you ain't say all that now, Dar. Hold on, player. You ain't say all that. But well, it would get those cars running. <laughs> wait a minute. Um, uh, yeah, my man, you think I can swap a six fold into my five, seven grand Cherokee? That is a more obtainable solution than going from a V6 to a V8, right? Uh, I crack up when people ask me, can I get that pinnacle out of there and put a Hemi in there? Now, from this standpoint here, remember, a Hemi block is ba it's almost a Hemi block. Hemi block, Hemi block. Uh, what differentiate a lot of this stuff is the intake and the heads maybe, but uh, like a 6-1, it has a funkier intake manifold on it. You know, so uh, that's doable, my guy. All right. There's not a lot of. I mean, it may be more from a tuning standpoint you may have to deal with, but from uh, a lot of physical things and not much, uh, not much going on, man. All right. Uh, I have the O2 PT battery light on different two, different two alternators and a good battery. I'm stumped. Battery light on, and it's the O2 model. You stumped. Oh, um, oh my goodness. Uh, the diagnostics for alternator not charging usually works for me, but you say this is a battery light situation, which will revert back to the page on alternator charging. And from what I'm hearing, a lot of it is the ground terminals on the side become loose, hidden, loose ground wires. I once had to turn a PT customer away because the battery harness has been discontinued. We can't get it. And we couldn't get a used one because nobody make one. So we had to pew, pew, go away. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's a lot of things you got to check, man. The battery harness is the main thing. All right. Battery harness, this is an O2, so it's not like the Tipham design PT Cruiser. This is O2. That battery harness going to the transmission, to the side firewall, all that stuff matters. Um, but I do all those diagnoses based off of cold, my friend. So I don't know where you're getting stumped at. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where you're getting stumped at. My scan tool can reset the battery and some other month. Yeah, he got 2017, though. Um, this thing have a, an electronic shift module. ECM. Everything on this freaking car is a module. From the shifter, the wiping blades, even that's a module. It's controlled by a module. 
Uh, I thought I was gone. Where all these comments come from? All right. Um, having fun with Skunk. What's going on, my friend? Uh, I will have to change the computers, I believe. Uh-oh. Uh, make sure you get a good one. He's probably just sending you the link to check it out, JT. Okay. Most skim modules, you unplug the skim and run skimless in reset mode. You can send your ECU out for 100 bucks to reset it. You might be able to do that yourself. Interesting. It's hard for me to explain that to people, Dart, because I've never done it. And I don't want somebody to go through an experience that I haven't experienced yet. But that's interesting, okay? That's what's up, Ty. Put the ECU in programming mode and unplug the skim. And you can drive the car, but the light will be on. Right. At that point, who cares about the light? Right? Am I understanding this? Uh, the, I bought a spare ECU for $150 with the VIN program on it and the security reset. It's doable then. Okay, thanks for you fusible link. Very much possible. Uh, is there a simple way to get out of limp mode? No, limp mode, limp mode, transmission stuck in second. No, the TCM guy, listen, your car, if you got a nag, you got your nag has its own separate TCM module under your steering wheel. Okay, so it's not part of the PCM. If that nag computer see a problem with a wheel speed sensor and it checks that stuff. I mean, it wants to know the rotational speed of each wheel at all times. If it don't see it, say from the right rear wheel, limp mode. So like I say, try to tackle that ABS problem first and you might, all your ears may be saw the PCM duty cycles that alternate it. Yes. Duty cycle on off, on off, on off uh, regulations and all that stuff. But He's saying his battery light on. Yeah, that's I said I had to be there, man. It's hard for me to speak on this stuff. Um, no codes, no codes, but the battery light on. Uh, fuse link is at the starter. Yes, built inside of that wire. That system is crazy because it goes from the alternator to the starter. All right. Now, there is a protection device, like my man saying, but it's a fusible link, not a fuse in your fuse box. It's a fusible link. It goes to the starter, and there's another wire attaches to the starter that goes to the battery. So, technically, that alternator is charging the starter. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Remember, guys, it's a joint connection at the starter. Another wire goes to the battery. But the alternator, big, the heavy gauge wire going directly to the freaking starter. Why is it designed that way? I don't know. But if there's a connection problem there, that could be your problem. But you saying the battery light on. If you're charging, it's likely that fusible link is good. So because you're charging. If it was open, then yeah, you wouldn't be charging. But your whole issue is the battery light. It's, it's some kind of connection issue. Uh somewhere. Is the dodge neon coming? No, 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 no. Four cylinder. That's a wrap. Limp mode is bad. Start pulling coals. Limp mode is definitely not good. Uh, should still be a lot of PT Cruiser in the yard. Yes, a whole bunch of them. 69 Dark Man, they all over the place. Um, all over the freaking place. Yeah, that's what I heard. Guys, I got to wind down. I'm at the one hour mark. I had a hard time finding a driver's car. Um, yes, I got to wind down. I'm at the one hour mark. Uh, I should probably make a skim delete. But yes, you should. Hey, everybody, petition for Dart Hemi to make. A skim delete video so we can know what the hell he talking about. All right. Yes. We will be looking for that video, Mr. Dark Hemi. All right. Thank you, my buddy. Guys, I got to go. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Come and subscribe. One more just popped up. Our dot got you. I saw where you said different size size affect ABS. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, with a nag one transmission, guys, it is crucial. Crucial. That all four tires be the same size. It's no different than being equipped with an all-wheel drive vehicle. All the tires have to be the same size tire with decent amount of thread on them. Okay? That is crucial. All right, guys, that's all I have. This hacker keep coming back. Uh, block user. Um, uh, do it dark. Yeah, you heard what Uncle Mark had said. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm out of here. Uh, thanks for watching.